it's a possibility that I may have been carrying this baby since Austin was in prison. Austin was in prison from 2016 to 2018. And I just want y'all to, my viewers to be with me while I'm trying to figure out what they're trying to hide about my pregnancy. There's more that they're trying to hide. And I just want y'all to just stay with me while I figure this out because I'm sitting here pregnant and holding this little baby in my body and it's moving and I, I know I'm pregnant and I know they're lying and I know what God showed me about the Wichita Falls shirt that Cynthia gave me while Austin was in prison and God showed the shirt moving but I was breastfeeding Melbourne and I learned that breastfeeding makes the womb shrink faster after you give birth, but my stomach never went all the way down, but it did shrink some, and Melbourne was always right there here, and I would not have noticed if I was still with child. Like, I'm trying to figure out how long I've been carrying this baby by Austin, and it is his because I was pregnant by him when they were poisoning me in the jail after the shooting. He was the only man that I lay ejaculating me. He was the only man I was sleeping with without the condoms. He was practically the only man that I really was sleeping with like that. He practically was the only man that I was sleeping with for all those periods of time in the time frame that God had said I'm pregnant and God said that it's Austin, that I'm pregnant by Austin. So I need y'all to stay with me while I go back to these moments of what all they're covering. And God said something about some twins. And he in the jail, he said some twins that uh, some that she carried. And I don't understand what's going on and what they're trying to do. I don't know how long I've been pregnant and how long they've been lying and I know people have been poisoning me and lying about my pregnancy for a very long time. They've been poisoning me since Austin was in prison. They've been poisoning me and now they come again because they know I'm, I'm telling shit and I'm trying to figure this out. Cause they were poisoning my food in my apartment. They started doing stuff to my the water um, and had broken the water filters in Walmart. The Brita water filters smashed them and they were all broken that I was buying to filter the water. Um, it's a Hispanic man right here in this truck and he's got his window down and he's probably listening to everything. I'm right here because I was charging my phone and um, I was at the other bus stops earlier, came and got me some food and ate lunch right here and I know they're all listening. It's just very sad. Uh, and they were poison. They started poisoning my food directly from the, uh, excuse me, I look y'all. Um, directly from the grocery stores in Cairo. I was buying food for me in Melbourne, bringing it home. The food was fine. My favorite brands, I always shopped and bought the same stuff. And uh, there was a woman that said to me after I gave birth to Melby, she said, uh, it looks like you're still pregnant. And I thought it was an insult because my stomach did not go down. And I was big and uh, they were going to try to cut me. Uh, and I said, no, I'm not going to allow you to cut me. And I gave birth vaginally to Melbourne. Uh, I saw what they showed me on the ultrasound. They printed out an ultrasound showing me one baby. <laughs> Because it's sad when people abuse you and lie about your medical records and stealing your kids. And they, that's what they showed me. And uh, I was big. <laughs> And the doctor, uh, he he wanted to, God showed me the Willis Hospital that I had been going to often had gotten arrested and was in the county 
uh, in Montgomery County Jail uh, for a probation violation when I started going to the Willis Hospital for my uh, for my, uh, my 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 care, my medical care during my pregnancy, and uh, God showed me the doctors and the nurses at the Willis Hospital before I was getting ready to give birth. Um, they he said they're they're gonna try to cut you, and you don't need, you don't need to be cut. And he was showing me the nurses and the doctor uh, that Cynthia uh, said was her friend, and that asked, and that asked him to be my provider. So I went to the Willis Hospital and started getting the medical care from Cynthia's friend. Uh, I, got, I think his name was John or something. I don't exactly remember. It's on my medical records. And uh, I started going to this man, and I was big. And the lady there did the ultrasound, showed me one baby printed out on the ultrasound. And God said that uh, the doctor that Cynthia was having me go to, Austin's mother, who was a nurse for 20 years and had a lot of affiliations in the medical field, uh, he said they're going to try to cut you with the nurses showing the white women in the Woodlands Hospital, and he showed me you don't need to be cut, and that Austin uh, was going to help you, uh, and that y'all needed to get out of the hospital uh, because they're trying to cut you in the Woodlands and you don't need to be cut. So when I was going into labor, we went to the Willis Hospital and Austin started uh, throwing, uh, uh, he started, uh, he wanted to go everywhere with me uh, and I wanted to go in the restroom alone and Austin had kind of been being a little immature while I was having the contractions and it was hurting and he was like having, making all these noises that were really just freaking, making me uh, irritated while I was gonna give birth for the first time and I asked him, could you cut that down a little bit? And he, will, he got mad and I said, okay, I need to go to the restroom. And when I went to go in the restroom, I, he tried to come in there with me and I said I wanted to go in alone and when he got angry and he started flipping over medical equipment inside of the hospital room and the nurses came in and tried he tried to attack me and the nurses came in and asked him to calm down and he started uh, flipping uh, like like flipping uh, medical equipment that has the baby's heart rate and everything. And they had security come up there, a white male. They, uh, the nurses called security and they escorted Austin out of the building and then asked me if I felt safe leaving the building with Austin, but my dad was there. And my dad had protected me from Austin while he was attacking me in the house when I was nine months going into labor in the home. And my dad punched him in the face and hemmed him up in the corner on the wall and then uh, that was it. So I figured, okay, I'm just going to leave with my dad in Austin and I told the officer that I would be fine. And then they called me and said that Austin could not attend the birth at the Woodlands because that he was banned for being violent with me in the uh, labor and delivery unit and they said that it was not safe to have him around newborns after what the nurses had witnessed from his behavior and then so I uh, often said you cannot have the baby because I had left the hospital with him and my dad when, after, when they called and then they said uh, uh, Austin said you cannot have the baby at the Woodlands because I'm going to be there for the birth of my son because they showed me an ultrasound of a little boy and uh he said you're not going to be able to have your baby there and i was going into labor like that night and so uh or the next day and i called uh Cairo regional hospital i went up there and i interviewed a couple of doctors and told them that i would possibly have to have an emergency birth there and they said okay and i never got to pick exactly which doctor i wanted before i actually went into full labor and when i went up there i also met with the midwife um and then when i went up there to deliver my baby they turned me away telling me to go back to the woodlands but i could not because austin would not allow me to and because he said he wanted to be there for the birth of our son so then they kept sending me away and gave me shots of vistoril and fentanyl fent fentanyl uh and then told me to leave and go home uh and i went home and the contractions got worse so i came back and then they still would not allow me into the labor and delivery unit saying that i was not far enough dilated it. 
at Conroe Regional Hospital in Conroe, Texas. And so I went outside screaming about to give birth to him in the parking lot. Uh, and then my dad said, no, we're just going to allow, we'll just bring her inside the emergency room and let her sit in the emergency room. And I was screaming in the wheelchair in the emergency room. And then they said in the emergency room, she cannot be in here screaming like that. Take her to labor and delivery. And then I went back and the white women were very angry that I was back. And I told them that I needed to be admitted and they still tried not to admit me. Finally, they admitted me and did not even want to give me any epidural to give birth to him. And I was screaming for them to give me the epidural and they finally gave me the epidural and I fell asleep and when I fell asleep the doctor came back in the room uh, and said that I was six uh, centimeters dilated and then I fell asleep and he came back and said that I was not dilating fast enough and that he had a flight to catch and that he was going to have to do an emergency c-section on me and cut me open and I knew that I had not even been given uh, that much time to really labor um, that was not under the stress of pressuring me to try to make him come out faster when I was already in labor and all they had to do was just kind of let me be in the hospital and so I told him that I would not allow him to cut me and then he said he wanted to check me and he went inside and he bust my water without my permission and put my child in danger because I know that once they do that you have to give birth to the baby within the first 24 to 48 hours or they'll have to do an emergency c-section because he, it could lose an amniotic fluid but it can regenerate it Itself for up to uh, uh, 42 to 72 hours if you're drinking enough fluids. And so I'm very intelligent, first of all, and they tried to say that I was a mental patient, that I couldn't even read or write or something like that um, while they had me in the Montgomery County Jail trying to murder me pregnant. And then he said to me uh, that he needed to cut me or that I would not have a doctor there to help me deliver my baby. And I said, no, I'm not allowing you to cut me. And so he walked out of the room and left the doctor at Conroe Regional Hospital. And a midwife had come in and said that she would have to help me because the doctor uh, didn't want to help me because I wouldn't allow him to cut me right then. And so I sat up and the nurse was trying to tell me that I had to keep laying down, but they had given me the epidural which had left me paralyzed and I knew that the baby needed to move down because I had did my research and found out that in nature women naturally give birth a lot of times like this and that I found out that the gravity of that of position or straddling something will help the baby to move down and help you also contract and open so this is why I set up and I, may, I, I put this leg like that over the bed and I put that leg like that and I set up and Melby moved down and I opened up to 10 centimeters and the woman said to lay down that I was making Melbourne's heart rate go up so I lied down and they left me in the room by myself and I opened up to 10 centimeters in the room by myself and he, I felt him moving down and he was about to come out and God had showed me that my baby that I would basically give birth in the room by myself and that's almost pretty much what happened because I had opened up to 10 centimeters and he was about to come out and then the midwife ran she had ran in the room she didn't really run but she come in the room and said okay let me check you and she checked me and said oh my goodness she's already at 10 we got to get her to push and everybody had left me Austin Cynthia the uh, the doctor the midwife everybody had left me and almost made me have to push it out on my own and uh Cynthia was saying that I, it wasn't Austin's and that I wasn't pregnant by him even though she knew that there had been no other men in contact with me at all other than Austin. She knew that and she was humiliating me because I was black in front of Conroe and in Magnolia and to Austin uh, trying to say that it wasn't his baby. And um, then they had Austin hold one leg and Cynthia hold the other and uh, the the research that I did said that the woman body will know when to push and my body could feel when to push but the midwife was telling me when to push and my body was telling me to push like a little six second after like la later than what she was telling me to push so she was telling me to push too early and I was pushing when she was telling me to and then it, I tore a little and uh, Melbourne came out and could not breathe 
and they they tried to tell me that he was dead when they when he first came out and I knew that he was alive and moving but he was moving sluggishly because I had the uh, well I thought it was because of the drugs all the drugs they gave me but God said it's because Austin was abusing me and I remember him moving sluggishly when he was abusing me and going into the hospital and getting monitored and seeing that he was all right but I didn't know that it affected him so much to make him come out and almost die and not be able to breathe and that God said that's what it was and so uh, I had pushed him out and he came out with an APGOR score of one or zero or something like that and then uh, they I said let me see him when she was saying he was not breathing because as a mother I know that I could do I know I know what to do to get my child to make sure he's alright naturally and she was like oh no he's, uh, he's alive and when I said give him to me because if you got a baby in your hand that I just gave birth to and you're claiming he's dead I'm not going to let you walk out of the room with the baby and do something to the baby or steal it and say he was dead I'm going to tell you to hand me my child so I can revive my child that was just alive in my stomach that I know I gave birth to alive even though I know that he was in pretty bad condition because of how I was treated and then so uh, she, he, they took him to NICU and hooked him up and he was good to go within an hour within an hour and he was screaming for titty milk uh, for the uh, what do you call it uh, colostrum because his stomach would not take the formula and it was making his butt run off real 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 bad um, and then so I didn't let them cut me and God had said they were going to try to cut me without having to. I did my research and found out they get way more money for cutting you than they do if you give birth naturally or with an epidural. And so um, I brought him home. They tried to keep him and say that uh, he had AIDS. Melbourne and I were tested right then and uh, we did not have AIDS. We had already been tested uh, through UTMB, um, the Woodlands, uh, got tested through Cairo Regional and me and Melbourne were clean. So uh, I wanted to sue them and told them that I was going to sue them for trying to say that I had AIDS when my baby was born. They tried to say that because Melbourne came out and couldn't breathe, I, his mother has AIDS. And I snapped. I went the fuck off. I said, hold on, who's saying I got AIDS around here? I said, I don't got no AIDS. And then I had them test me. Well, they wanted to test me to see and mail me to see if we had HIV or AIDS. And I was completely embarrassed that they would do that. And I said, all you got to do is call the Woodlands and my provider, and he'll send you the records, and it's going to show you I don't got HIV or AIDS. I didn't give my baby nothing to make my baby come out like that. And then they lied. First of all, they had lied and said they were testing me for a stomach virus. And then they went around the hospital saying it's, that she got AIDS, and we testing her for AIDS behind my back. And then I saw on the medical report, that they had tested me for AIDS and HIV and said that they were testing me for a stomach virus and that it was negative and they released us negative and I called and told them that I was going to sue them for saying that I had AIDS and lying about what you were testing me for and spreading nasty rumors about me and Mel B around the hospital when we were HIV negative and we didn't have herpes or anything so I don't appreciate them threatening to give my child AIDS and threatening to give us herpes behind this shooting and then uh, over here mad at us because we didn't have STDs and then you're trying to molest my child and give them STDs and you're trying to rape me outside on the streets and give me STDs and I'm pregnant and that's wrong to try to force somebody to have AIDS and their child to have AIDS and you're trying to force us to have herpes and this little baby is moving very well. My storage is 